everybody, welcome back. I'm Bridget. And I'm Carla with Hardwood Lumber and Millwork. So what are we talking about today, Carla? So I got a phone call from a customer who said, you know, she needed some oak boards. And um, first question is, well, what kind of oak boards? Red oak, white oak? She really didn't know. She didn't know the difference between the, t the two species. So I'm like, okay, we need to talk. Let's talk about this. So um, I guess the general assumption would be that one is red and one is white. <laughs> and that's... You would difference. think so, right? But uh, so you would think so. <laughs> not the case, not the case. Um, actually, uh, your red oaks and your white oaks, red oak has a Jenko hardness rating of about 1220. So it's a good, um, stable hardwood. White oak has a um, Jenko rating of over 1300, so it's very dense. Both of these woods are really great uh, for furniture and, and just you know things that are gonna take a lot of abuse. So when it comes down to identifying uh, red oak and white oak, color being the first one, there's actually about 10, 10 species of different species of trees that are lumped together and sold as red oak. And then there's about 10 species of trees that are lumped together and sold as white oak. So you, that's really, well, you know, when you put these, these variances together, you know, from genetics to um, growing conditions to the drying conditions, uh, tone color is not really a good way to identify the wood because you're, you know it's from pink to beige to golden brown to wheat color so that's not going to really be a good way to identify your your uh, difference between red and white oak interesting that's that's I didn't know that that's cool <laughs> so I guess one of the things that I've learned is that the way you can tell the difference between red oak and white oak is to look actually at the grain pattern on you know the face of a board. This is true. Yeah. So the red oak has these small little flecks in them. You can see they're called rays. They are. I'll be your Vanna. Oh, thank you. Okay. They are you know small little black flecks and they're very tiny. Uh, usually no more than three quarters of an inch, but typically around an eighth of yeah. an inch. Yeah, they're very tiny. Um, and the red oak tends to have a busier sort of grain pattern. You can see all this, this cathedral up in here. Yeah. So The white oak, on the other hand, thank you, Vanna, has um, the longer rays starting at about an inch and getting longer. And you can see that the grain pattern is also a little bit quieter, it's a little bit more muted, um, it's a little bit more toned down. So that's kind of one of the one of the ways you can tell the difference between you know red oak and white oak. I like I like referring to white oak as like the modern updated version of oak. Yeah. Oh, I like that. So um, another way that you can tell if you have the opportunity to look at the raw wood, to look at the end grain of a fresh cut board, you're going to see the white oak actually has sealed grains. They, these these um, pores of the white oak is like clogged pores. Mm, I feel that. I know, right? Something I can relate to. <laughs> so these are clogged pores. It's actually called tylosis. And they're very beneficial because this makes the white oak, it's a sealed grain wood. It makes it great for cutting boards, for tabletops, countertops. It's um, frequently used in marine, pro you know, out um, products, you know, or on boats and stuff. So it's, the tylosis is excellent for sealing the wood. When you look at the end of a red oak board, Oh, you can yeah. you can go through and you can look at it and you're gonna see there's actually holes in the end of it there they're very tiny hard to see but you got to look at a fresh freshly cut in yeah. and you're gonna see those holes red oak is actually very reedy you can actually if you were to take a dowel and my lovely assistant is gonna take a dowel if you actually take a dowel you can blow air all the way through that to create bubbles so that's what red oak, that's what happens with red oak. It's very reedy. Air passes through it, but what also happens is that's going to allow it to suck in moisture. It's going to bring it into those um, ca ca caverns in there, and it's going to want to suck in moisture, water, stain. Red oak is notorious for that. So that makes it a less beneficial wood to use in wet environments, um, cutting boards. It's not good for cutting oh, yeah. boards, that sort of thing. Interesting. So as far as workability goes, um, red oak is a really it's it's trickier to use because you do have the tendency to splinter and tear out you absolutely do we actually had a customer in the shop a couple of weeks ago and he was practicing dove, dovetails with red oak he had some in the shop it was just some scrap and he was trying to work on dovetails and it just it kept tearing out on him like crazy and my heart just ached for him because he didn't know red oak is actually has that quality about it. It's not a good practice wood for dovetails. 
it's hard enough to do dovetails, much less in a red oak, much less if you're trying to learn. So that that was not a good good choice just for the quality of oak and, and how it has tendencies to do that. That's such a bummer. It is. But as you referenced stain a couple minutes ago, yeah. it's red oak takes stain beautifully, but you do have to worry about or keep an eye on more so those those you know, open the, the open ends. ends. You do. Um, that's an excellent place to use a stain blocker, a blotch blocker. We carry the aquathane blotch blocker, which is excellent for that. What it's going to do, it's going to help even out those cells and even out it, the absorption of stain into them. Um, so it it kind of close up those open reeds to it. So it's a good choice. Well, and then on the flip side of that coin, you've got the white oak, which doesn't tear out or splinter as easily. Um, and it's a little bit less likely to suck up all of that stain, but it, you yeah. know you can still get a great, a great finished product. Definitely, the guys in the shop prefer working with white oak. Red oak is great. Red oak has its place. They do prefer working with the what qualities of white oak, though. So when you look at what to use the woods for, red oak is um, dominant, and you see it in furniture. It's an inexpensive oak. It's readily available. It's tons of um, stair components, stair treads, handrails, um, balusters, things like that. Uh, you see it in furniture. Of late, I've noticed a couple of um, like the big box home improvement stores, they will have red oak kitchen uh, cabinet doors, oh, okay. but they'll put the really dark ebony stain on it. So you're getting a lot of grain, a lot of texture, but you're still getting that classic dark look, which is really, you know, a, an updated modern look in your, in your kitchen. So you're seeing that a lot with red oak. White oak, same uses, countertops, um, marine grade, and then it's also great for cutting boards. And it's a oh, it's a beautiful it's a beautiful naked or you can stain it. It takes stain great too. Great. So yeah. Great. Either way. Well, we hope you guys enjoyed this and learned something. If you have any questions, please feel free to reach reach out to us. Again, always remember, whatever you build, keep it sustainable. We'll Bye, see guys. you again next time. <laughs>